Uh, good morning and hello everybody and welcome to the our today webinar and today our topic is optimizing uh, business application when working on create ideas. Uh, we'll be starting with uh, with just quick uh, glance at what uh, what is the create ideas and what is the what the create ideas brings to you to the earth observation project uh then we'll talk about the possibility of cooperation with Creodias and with cloud Faro regarding uh your data your processor your application then i will tell you how to uh how to achieve the business sustainability for your projects and then we'll just quickly cover some basics about the cloud billing models and how to use them to your advantage Uh, so currently, Credias is the best platform on the market for the Earth observation-related uh, projects. Uh, the, our platform is uh, focused and orientated to, for the providing the data and providing the cloud environment. So we are very focused on uh, availability on the data, on accessibility on the data to have all the data uh available in real time no, and not waiting for the uh, for any kind of cache or any kind of uh long term archive that you have to access and wait we provide very competitive uh, cloud environment with many different uh, versions of and flavors of virtual machines and also many other services we are totally uh, European company with all our uh, public clouds hosted in uh, in uh, European data centers with uh, high environmental and safety standards to ensure that uh, the business is environmental friendly and that uh, all operations are safe. Uh, we provide all our users with free uh, data, free Copernicus data, and also other uh, EO data archives uh, with many options how to access the data and how to connect to the data from our cloud and also from external, uh, external platforms. Uh, we offer our users an option to incorporate their own data into the archive and for the users inside the working from our cloud the access to the data is always free and we try to provide uh, to to provide the access as fast as it is possible so the for most of the clients or for all of the clients there are no obstacles in accessing the data in the speed of the access of the data and they just uh, can focus on uh, on uh, data uh, processing. So Credias is not only a platform for uh, providing the data and uh, for uh, and for uh, data processing, but it's also a platform for cooperation. So our users have options to deploy their own applications, they all they own services, they own data and they own processors uh, into the Creo DS. And we can help them in uh, help them by sharing our experience and also by sharing our tools, uh, expo ex uh, putting their data into inside our own archive or creating private archives for the users to share data between uh, many different projects. This is something that uh, is very keen to us to, to see and to enable our users to, to share the data and to share the knowledge and to share the processors to, to better understand the data. The most common grounds when the, we are on which we are uh, cooperating with the clients and with our users is uh, sharing the data, especially our data between different users and putting it on a uh, between different collections, uh, putting um, free or paid processors inside our tool chains, or just selling the applications. 
the common frameworks for uh, cooperations we, we, that are ongoing on many different levels even right now is hosting the data so if we see the business uh, case for hosting uh, additional data on our public repository uh, we'll put it there and we are always open to suggestions from users what kind of data they are lacking and what we should put uh, into our repository for them to process uh we also uh, provide uh, we are also able to host the any collection any paid collection on our services and uh, back it up but our experience and our user base and sell the data to users so we can for example you can put your collection of data uh, on Creodias and sell it to uh, other customers and we also provide customers with access to external data for example in this way you provide access to high resolution satellite imaginary images when uh, users are able to order and access high re resolution data from uh, external providers but they are uh, essentially accessing it in the same way they are accessing the data on Creodias. We just have to wait for us to transfer the data from the provider and they can also order the data, order the high resolution images to be taken in the future from our, uh, our uh, platform. The second and I think the most interesting way to cooperate is to uh, host your data processor in our pipeline, in our uh, in our chain. So this can basically be done in two ways. Uh, either we can just add your processor as the next processor on our list, and then you and all other users can use it to process the data. And we charge everyone a fee that is uh, covering the uh, cost of running the processor. Or, or you, you can we can put the commercial processor on the Creodias, and then we share with you the revenue uh, for using the processors. So, so basically, part of the revenue goes to the uh, owner of the processor, and part of it goes to us. Uh, the second option is. Uh, I think this is the one that has some future because the processors are starting to be really complicated and we start to see the complicated chains uh, of processing and it, for many users when there is just there is no uh, really a need to set up all the chain it's easier just to order the processing with some parameters and uh, get the results and not have to <laughs> not have to uh, create all the environment. The third option of uh, cooperation is just using the, just us selling uh, commercial licenses for the software for Creodias users. So for example, if you have a software that has a license and you sell it to the users, we also work as a marketplace to sell, to sell the uh, license to the end customers. And uh, I think as the the biggest platform for Earth observation, or one of the biggest, we are the place that many users will find it easier to buy the license here and not on external uh, somewhere else to use it f fast and freely. And uh, on top of this, if your processor or your data or your license uh, becomes part of the Creodias, our support will support the end users uh, in using this data processor or application on their VMs and will help uh, them uh, install it and use it. Uh, so this part of uh, helping the users and the customer support will then go to us and we'll have to do this not you so this is very very fast and very easy way to to, to just uh, give users your data and your software uh, project business system sustainability the first thing I want to tell you is that for Earth observation projects that are just starting or just, just testing or just searching for users and customers, 
using Korea DS is one of the easiest way to uh, to get the attention and to start working with uh, with end customers. So Korea DS is stable. Korea DS is uh, is quite big. So there is there are no infrastructure boundaries. Uh, Crowdias offers already rich, rich collections of data and uh, many other processes, so the end users don't have to uh, search for them in other queries. It's it's a lot, a lot of easier to run it on Crowdias than to sell it on your own and try to create your own environment for the users who then have to uh, get the data and get other uh, elements of the process chains to work. And Creodias is very easy to develop, test, and uh, deploy applications. So you can start your environment in a manner, matter of seconds and just start doing things and don't wait for for it to to pop up into existence and to don't wait for the everything that is always related to starting a new project. Uh, and uh, if you start on the Creodias, which is an application is hosted on Creodias, you can get uh, our support to help you with your uh, with your application. So, for example, our support will support your users uh, in uh, many different ways, and we will be the first and second line of the support. So, our support is currently done in three languages, and uh, we can add more if there is a requirement. Uh, we can do together a pro uh, promotion, uh, some kind of promotion. So we will uh, tell our users about uh, your uh, about your application, about your data, about your processor, and how to use it. We can do together a webinar on how to use application and how to so uh, how to uh, what will be the benefits and how does it uh, shine comparing to all the other things. Uh, and uh, by doing so, we can help you grow because uh, the best way to to have uh, business sustainability is to have users that pay for the application and use the data. Uh, and uh, frankly, most of the clients that your clients for your application are clients that are already on Creodias. So mm, they have an account here, they do some uh, computations on Creodias and they are familiar with the whole uh, environment. So, when you are using uh, Creodias, there are some basic uh, basic um, business models that you are uh, should be aware. They are common in the cloud uh, world, but they are you just have to know them to get the, to start to get a feeling. Uh, when you, we are talking about the cloud business model, no matter it is the um, VM data access or uh, processor, you, we mostly talk about the per usage model. So the customer pays for the using, not for the possibility of using, and not for uh, not uh, doing anything. So basically, most of our customers run VMs and start and shut down the virtual machines or uh, network on daily basis. They, when they need, they, for example, start 100 VMs, they do their computations and they, they shut them down to reduce the costs of the VMs. And this is perfectly normal and this is how we should think about cloud in general and about the cloud services. So there is no need to have this uh, uh, this big chain that is uh, active all the time and only for some time you are using it and really processing the data. And extension of it is that you don't, uh, don't have your own environment, but you only order some uh, processing of the data and you get results put into your storage that you are then uh, transferring somewhere else. This is the, the cloud 2.0, the next model that is that you are only paying for the function or for computation or for the data, but you are not uh, really running any calculations uh, by yourself on your own virtual machines. 
And this is something that we provide today, and we are we think this is the way that the uh, uh, market be moving in the future. So there is no need for the customer to be very experienced with uh, Kubernetes, virtual machines. The customer and the user should be experienced uh, in uh, data, what type of data, how to change their data, what is the end of the results and how to use it. The, the end result data, not uh, doing the computation and running complicated uh, computing environment. Uh, and the second model that you, the, the, the model that is more, let's say from the old days when how it was done in the old times, it is the fixer model. So in fixer models, you rent specific, uh, specific resources, computing resources or storage resources, <coughs> for a specific time, you then, uh, regardless that you are using them or not, you are paying uh, for those resources. For us, it's uh, more from business perspective, for, from cloud provider, we know that you will be using the uh, computing environment for the long time, so the price is uh, fixed and the price is uh, much cheaper than in for example, one day costs 40% uh, less than in uh, pay use mode, but uh, uh, but it's uh, well you have to use it um, regardless that you are using it or not. You have to pay for it, so you pay also for the dry runs and for times that you don't use the virtual machines, uh, and you are committed for the long time for paying for the resources. So it is. It, it reduces your flexibility, but if you know that you'll be, for example, processing the data for six months, it will be much more easier to use the fixed room billing mode and not the pay, pay use mode. It depends on your computation and on your uh, and what you want to do and how long it will take. Uh, the per use mode has two distinctive modes. One is the pure per pay use mode when you just upfront buy some uh, resource unit from us. Uh, and then the, when you are using a resource, the, it has a price in resource unit and you have to pay for, pay for the VMs or for the storage in those resource units. And uh, this is the basic, very, very quick model to run and very quick model to uh, set up. You can go on the Creodia's website and set up an account, pay, and start using in, I think, two minutes is way too long to, to do it. So in, in one minute, uh, you will be able to start your environment and start using it. But this model also has some uh, disadvantages. The biggest one is that uh, the resource is, is not uh, guaranteed. So mm, when we look at the cloud environment, uh, the the size of the cloud is limited no matter what we try to say the size of the cloud is limited and because of this there is no uh, no way for us to to satisfy all needs so because of this the you, you have to remember if you are running in paper use mode you can uh, come into the you can just run after, we can just run after the resources and won't be able to start more virtual machines or more storage or uh, other things like this. And the, there is a unknown cost of the resources. So by unknown cost, I mean that uh, you pay, uh, for example, us a thousand, v, a thousand euros and thousand euros uh, lets you run five, five VMs for three months. But and it also also can let you run a thousand VMs for fifteen minutes, and we don't limit you in any way. So you have to control your costs because you can easily uh, spend everything and don't do much computations. If you have, for example, an error in the code, there are some fail fail sets there, but basically you are free to use all our infrastructures and. <laughs> there is always a possibility of using it way too much that you really need. And there is a second billing mode 
the pay use mode is pay as you go mode. In this mode, you mm, sign a contract with Cloudflare, a paper contract, and then we uh, let you use uh, our environments or other products or processing uh, freely. And at the end of the month, we invoice you and we, how much you really used during this month. So you don't pay upfront, you pay after using our services. And again, if there are no uh, no fail safe puts. We can put safe fail safes here, but by default there are, there aren't any. So you can use it freely, but uh, freely there it is quite easy to spend ten thousand euros per month for resources. So you have to control your usage, and this uh, those are the disadvantages. But because there is a written agra uh, agreement, we can put some fail safes there. And you want to be invoiced more that you mm, stated in the agreement. So how to, let's say, exploit those differences in the billing modes and exploit them to your advantages. So uh, the biggest advantage that you can uh, exploit is uh, the one that uh, you don't have to pay for the resources that you stopped using in the pay use modes. So you have to analyze your project and be certain that you, uh, if you need a VM running 24-7, uh, or you will only need it for four hours a day. If you only need it for four hours a day, it is easier to uh, to set up a pay-per-use account or pay-as-you-go agreement and work there. Uh, and the best way to launch your environment in fixed time, you're really launching it from the e-commerce side. So it takes some time and it's a long process because you have to uh, pay for the invoice. And especially in pay, if you pay as you go, you can just start and stop the, everything from the API. So for big environments uh, in thousands of VMs, it is easier to run it uh, that way. Uh, the, there is also a possibility of using the mixed billing mode. So, for example, uh, by mixed billing mode, uh, I mean that you, part of in your infrastructure or part of your environment is in fixed term and part is in mixed mode. There are three product categories that are way easier to, to, to build and to manage in uh, in paper use mode or in as you go mode because it is way uh, it is just uncertain at the start how much resource do you need it is the product uh, product generation when it's uh, sometimes hard to do to determine at the start how many uh, how many products that will be generated and putting in a fixed uh, agreement uh, the, the reality is that you will always order too much. The storage, when it is when you are have a fixed term agreement, you have to order more that you will use uh, use uh, because you always want to have some reserve for some unexpected data uh, and the access to your data and for high resources images when the, you really it is very hard to to state before how much data or file how much images uh, you will need uh, before getting them for example you have some criteria on the data the the time the 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 satellite obviously the uh, uh, the area but before you start getting the data, you don't know uh, how much of the products are really covered by cloud or in other ways, unaccessible for you. For example, they aren't, they weren't created by the source. So it is better to pay for those projects after you have uh, done your calculations. Uh, so choosing the best option is somehow, you have to consider the base some base, free base things. 
first is that um, you need to ask yourself if you need the fixed term or if you can remain in paper use mode. Second is how long is your contract? Because short contracts, for example, one and a half months, the fixed term prices are per month. So you have to order two month contract to get uh, the environment started and running. So it will be cheaper to use to run it in paper use mode and just shut it down on the end. And the scale of the contract, I mean, the time frame of the contract is really the most important. If you have a short something quick, for example, in, when you are thinking in days, uh, then the paper use mode and pay as you go modes are more user friendly and they do just at the end, most of the time, you will get the calculations cheaper than using the fixed term contract. And uh, one special thing about the Creo Diaz is that, that we provide our users with the possibility to sign a six month contract. This is something that most of our competition doesn't have. And there is a, the pricing is almost as good as for the one year contract. So you can, uh, so you can uh, adjust it uh, accordingly. Mm. And the, as I said before, there are three uh, special kind of products, the storage, the product generation, accessing the data that mostly uh, require paper use, but um, this is one thing that you should be aware that object storage uh, should be really only used in paper use mode because in object storage is a special kind of storage that you can only that you only pay for the data that is really there. So when you are ordering a volume storage, uh, you must order the free space on the volume also and realistically speaking there is no there won't be a situation when you are using 100 percent of your volume because uh, then adding more data is impossible and your virtual machines or anything that you do you crash uh, the server and and it stops working so so you have to always uh, buy more and in object storage, you don't really think about the free space. You only put more data. So the paper use mode is always better here. And when you are ordering uh, from our website, there is a very quick uh, and easy way to order the, the fixed term contract on the e-commerce. You just, there are, Four easy steps, you add the environment, you configure it, and you are ready to start. And the longest time, the, the longest thing that is always there is the paying for the invoice because in some organization it takes not seconds like every other spend, but minutes and hours. Uh, and uh, in all billing modes, uh, whenever you are using the computing environment, you have always the access to the dashboard and to the uh, APIs where you not, not always can see how big is your environment and what are you, what are you doing then and how much instances, CPUs, RAM, etc. you are currently using. Uh, but you can also start and just click and uh, use more uh, computing uh, power. And also you have all the APIs listed there, so you can, this is basic open stack. So you can just uh, do whatever you want there and uh, script the whole process. And most of the big clients use Terraform scripts or other uh, tools to really quickly start hundreds or even thousands of VM and then later destroy them. And and this is the, the the really the right way to use a cloud not from the fixed term perspective but from the api perspective and not uh, managing it from user console and uh, some graphical interface by but by apis and by issuing computer understand commands to the to the cloud
Mm, okay, so what is the right right uh, way to, uh, to how to determine which one is, is the right model? So when you look at our price list for virtual machines, uh, you can instantly see the price for the yearly contract monthly price is way lower than the price for monthly contract. And if you calculate the price per hour, you will also see it is uh, higher than the per month contract. So the VMs have uh, uh, the resources that VM gives is uh, the same depending on the, not the same, but you get the resources that are stated here, but uh, you have to choose the, the environment and in the pay per use mode and the pay as you go mode, you can always change the virtual machines, just just uh, skill one machine, get another, and that's that. You don't have to write any new contracts. So this is the, the, the thing that you have to understand about the cloud environments that uh, if you are in the pay per use mode or pay as you go mode, you just uh, can, uh, if you come to understanding that this VR to a machine is too small or too large, you can always uh, kill it and get the uh, other flavor to run and also to experiment and to develop new new capabilities and to test them. Uh, but the prices, as I said, for the storage are mostly the same regardless of how much uh how much you are using how long or how long you'll be keeping the data so the, the price initiative for the doing uh, the storage and order ranking for one year is virtually known it's on a few percent so most of the users use the storage in paper use mode and uh, the virtual machines in a mixed fixed mode paper use mode depending on the on the computation and depending on what you want to do. Uh, and also for some users, because those previously also virtual machines, for some users uh, having the whole server, uh, compute server is very important. And for those users, we have the special line for virtual machines. Uh, those are really dedicated server with virtual machines. So each VM takes the whole compute server and you have the resources of the whole compute server uh, just for you. It's not only the processor, RAM and disks, but also the uh, network and network access to the AO data. And all of these machines comes with the local SSD drives uh, and uh, those local SSD drives and NVMe drives are very fast and uh, have very low latency. So you can expect up to uh, free uh, 100,000 IOPS from a drive or even more, depending on the flavor. And in some machines, we offer the GPUs. So if you are interested in GPUs, we also can provide those and uh, we'll be expanding those uh, offer in some future. We are just generating information, what is the really needed. And we have also for some time the new line of virtual machines, the virtual machines with local storage. And they have the same price as the high memory line. They, uh, the storage for those machines is inside the compute servers and they have very low latency and very high uh, IOPS. So this is, if you are, for example, searching for the virtual machines for processing, it will be easier to run it. Uh, on those machines and not on the machines that have a network storage. Because if you have a network storage, you are, uh, for once, uh, the storage consumes some of the network and for other, you have a bigger latency and latency is always bad. And as I said, the price is in line with the normal high memory. So you basically can choose if you want to have this VM on a network storage or non local storage. So uh, just to a quick, quick wrap of the things, what to consider when you are launching on the pro uh, project on CreoDS. The first thing and the most important thing is to the length of the projects. The second thing we encourage all of our clients is to uh, 
test our environment, test your application to know what CPU power and other things you need. If you want to, uh, to run a longer project, uh, it is better to talk with our sales guys to work with the agreement that works for you and for us so you can uh, so you can uh, have a guarantee of your uh, environment and the sometimes better price for for computation resources and it's always better to to, to order storage uh, in a paper use mode and because then you only pay for all for what you are using and not for uh some free space or what you expected to use mm, and what to remember about what i said earlier that each and every product can be built in different ways in fixed term or in paper use and you have to ask yourself what is the best opinion option here that you can work with our business developments developers and we, with our sales guys and to work the best agreement that will help you and that will work for you better uh, we provide custom solutions and we improve the platform on, really on a daily basis <coughs> for example we add more data we add more processors and if you are looking for more data and we can build some business case around adding more data we can add it to the to the AO data. So you, if you want uh, some data collection that is not here, uh, start talking with us and we can work it from there and try to uh, to add it. And we can also put your custom uh, processor, your custom data on the DAS for everyone to use. And there are ways to share also your data that you have in your private repository on CreoDS with other users. So we can, you can collaborate with others and not have to copy the data uh, every time, sometime someone who wants to use it. Uh, there are many different ways to use cloud and cloud services. And it is important to remember that they will change in time and the, the 1.0 model when you order the resources for a longer time is changing. And you will, in the future, we see that Will be the cloud will be going in the direction that the users will, will pay for the end data and the result, and not for just doing things. Uh, the CreoDS is uh, comparing to the market environment very flexible and very agile, and we can do things really really fast if it is required and uh, start new services in a matter of days and weeks, not months and years. And we help our users and our customers grow. So we help to share the data, we help to share the processors, share the applications, promote them, and uh, to show you how some use cases and how to how to get to the users and who can be interested or uh, work together together towards the tender to to start working on something. Thank you for attending and uh, I hope you'll have a great day today. We, have a, we had a solar eclipse today, so this is the one of those unique days. Thank you very much and see you on the next webinar.